So I'm having real good technology fun. Thank you. So much. I like the way you said that. Technology. Real good technology fun. Uh -huh. Oh, oh, there it is. Ha! Where did your son go? Well, um, it's my son. Oh, yeah, this isn't even my computer. This is actually what Tim decided was his background. Just kidding, it's actually Stacy's. Wow, wow double two there. Wow. Yeah, uh huh. All right, so now I need to do something. Yeah, to change the. Yeah. I have done with the keys, but I want to take a look. So okay. We'll finish it on Monday, please. All righty. All right, so apparently we have to, uh, there we go, put that in there, and, oh gosh, oh gosh, oh, that's so bright, okay, there it is, Deed. all right, so multiple angle identities, superb, 5-4, that's what we're doing. All right, so you already have uh, these in your notes, so it's not like you need to write them down, but you do need to double check that you know what's actually happening. So, uh, let's see. Our double angle identity is basically any time that you see something with a two inside of uh, whatever it is, you are probably going to then have to have it equal to something that has no twos inside. And as much as you try some algebra to like divide out a two or something, that's not possible, okay? You can't do that. And so in that case, you have to use a double angle identity. So you have to find, for instance, sine of two u and make it two sine u cosine u uh, in order to write it differently. Um, we also have this one here, which gives us three options. And technically, because everything is derived from everything else, it doesn't actually matter which one you pick. It just matters which one you pick if you want it to be faster or not. Um, because again, each of these can be found from the other one. So it's okay if you put this one on um, because for instance, uh, cosine squared, uh -huh. anyway, they can all be derived from each other, which I don't want to explain. Uh, so you can pick any one of them, but of course, depending on what your answer is, you might pick one. For instance, if you have um, only a cosine in your answer, you might want to then use this one that only has the cosine versus a cosine and a sine. So always look at what it's trying to be equal to, uh, and then you can choose which one of these. And then we also have tangent, which of course is never helpful, but there it is with the fraction. Kind of like the other one, uh, the sum and difference identity. Tangent is never helpful. It really isn't because it's the ratio of the other ones, and so it's always going to be really complicated. So sorry, it won't get less complicated. All right. So that's your double angle, and I believe we're going to do an example, so let's see. Hey, yeah, so we're going to prove the identity. How nice is that? Uh, so 1 plus 2 cosine of, sorry, cosine of 2a is apparently equal to 2 over 1 plus tangent squared of a. So we are going to take a few minutes to rewrite this, which I don't want to go around in the wrong ways. Or the way that they'll make everyone hate me, so I'll do it the right way and I'll grab the notes. Because if I do it the hard way, then you're all like, no, I can never do that. Mm -mm. I have not. <laughs> Count me out. All right. So, first thing that we're going to do is apparently, oh, uh, use one of the identities. So, cosine of 2a actually is. Ooh, and we get to pick which one. Oh, that's exciting. Because we're trying to get, oh my gosh, a tangent in it. So cosine of 2a, none of them have tangents. So, but there is a squared. So we might want to go to, oh, well, they're all have squared. Okay. Well, anyway, the one that I have chosen based on guessing is 2 cosine squared u minus 1. I usually don't pick the top one, in case anyone's wondering because that always makes me feel like it should be a Pythagorean identity, but it's not. So, anyway, it always tricks me a little bit too much. So we're going to rewrite this one. Again, not rewriting any of this, because we have to hold that side. Otherwise, it's not a proof. So hold that side out, and we're just going to rewrite this left side. So we're going to change cosine 2a into 2 cosine squared. 
of a minus one. So that entire stuff underlined uh, became this stuff in the parentheses. And then just as the quiz had, in case you forgot, um, there was a plus and a minus. It was actually a sign, but anyway, we had a one minus a one, and so then those go away. Also gonna congratulate everyone on uh, excellent steps. I was very, I was e able to solve all of how you got from one step to the next. There were not a lot of jumps, that was nice. Alrighty, and then we're going to change this to its fraction equivalent. So two is technically still two over one, um, but I want, oh, I want to get to tangent, and one plus tangent squared is a Pythagorean identity. One plus tangent squared is secant squared. So I'm going to try to make this into a secant squared. So how do I make cosine into a secant? I get to put it... Uh, let me think about it. One over secant, because that would be the flip, and then whoa, that's that's tricky. Okay. So I keep it as two um, because the answer notice has a two on the top, and then I move the secant down because it's cosine. But if it was moved down, it would be secant to move it back up. It's really obnoxious. Uh, and then secant squared in our Pythagorean identity is one plus tangent squared. So we now have two on top and a one plus tangent squared of a on top. So again, if you had chosen a different one, you would have just had to do like 20 more steps in between. Or like five. Yeah. So you either guess right or don't. Yeah, but you're also going to always guess right because you can always get there. It just will take more time. Yeah. Okay. Wait, but how does Secant squared turned into one plus tangent squared. That's our Pythagorean identity. Oh, yeah. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, I'm going to write it really small. Okay. Um, so, in case anyone is wondering, this is very bright looking on the screen. Still too bright. That's okay. I like it bright. Okay. Um, so, we're going to move on. That was that magic. And now, doo -doo 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 -doo. I used to say that when I was teaching. Well, it's not magic, it's really just logic and you can know the steps. But I always assumed that people were like, nope, I don't know how to do it. it was just, apparently it's magic. That's how it happened. All right. All righty. So uh, next one, this is very exciting. Uh, we've got our sign, and we are going to use a, uh, what is sum identity, sum and difference identity. Because notice that it says sine of 3x, super, we don't have a sine of 3x, we have a sine of 2x. So we're going to make this into a sine of 2x by doing sine of 2x plus 1x, and therefore we can use a sum identity with sines of 2x in it. I know, huh? So the sum identity tells you that you're going to get a sine of this first piece, and then you're going to multiply it by cosine of the second piece, and then you're going to add that to cosine of the first piece oh, yeah. times sine of the second piece. Why? So that's your oh, because angle. it's the v and the u thing. Yes. Okay, cool. I can Thank you. Yeah. You did that. All right. Oh man, this is gonna get fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's never a good sign. Oh, it's always a good sign. Okay, so here we go with this one because this is one of the identities that we just learned, and this is one of the identities that we just learned. So we're gonna rewrite sine of two x as two sine x cosine x. Cause duh. Because that seems so much easier. Uh huh. And then it's still times cosine. <laughs> So this thing is still here. Uh, and then we're going to add cosine of 2x to the identity, but we're going to rewrite cosine of 2x as 2 cosine squared of x minus 1, which hopefully kind of looks like that, okay? And then times sine, because we had to bring that piece down. So the two underlying pieces are rewritten as something different um, because of the angle identities we just learned, and then the other two pieces are brought along for fun. So then we're going to distribute, because that's what I feel like. 
Um, and the problem, of course, is that when you look for how to distribute, you need to know that the middle or the separator is the subtraction. So you're not doing sine times two and sine times cosine, which is sine times that whole giant chunk. So now we're going to get two, how did I write it, sine cosine? And then minus sine of x. And then that is all going to be added to, oh my gosh, something that already has cosine squared in it. So 2 sine squared cosine squared. And so now we have two of them and two of them. And so we have four of them. And minus sine of x. But then I'm going to take a sine out of both of them because notice the sine is out front. So, and by take out, I mean divide out. Oops, so I'm going to divide both of these by sine of x. And so now you're going to have the sine out front, exactly how it is, a 4 cosine squared, and then minus the 1 from that divided by sine. I'm just not going to rewrite it because it's up there. So, super, maybe. All right. Great check mark on there. Ooh, there's another one. All right. So, we're going to solve another one. Any further clarifications on this guy? I put a lot of arrows to help out. That's really helps. Thank you for that. Yeah. yeah. Arrows are super helpful. Okay, so, oh my gosh, who was it on their test that had arrows and they were actually very helpful? But I that was probably, was that you? Yeah, it might have been, yeah, it was either Ezra or Lex that had some arrows and I was like, oh, I see, okay. <laughs> like this one here and this one here. Okay. It's because, like, I feel like the way I have to write out, like, as I'm solving it, is I just go straight down from the problem and then to the right. Yeah. And that is, like, all this space. In like the upper right hand corner, and if I need that, then I'm like drawing arrows. I write really big, so it's just like, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and then there's then like, I circle yeah. the answer, and it's yeah. usually wrong anyway. So. <laughs> when I was in like sixth grade, I would try to cram all my math problems, like no matter on how many words you not assigned, I would get them all on one page. Oh my god! And so I would yeah, but here, 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 yeah, just everywhere. I bet Regina hated work. that. Yeah. But, I mean, she would actually check the answers. Right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, God. But I bet she hated it. Yeah. She yeah. exactly was like, hmm. Yeah. But she's like, use the back of the paper. Or another one so. as Skagel. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, another sign of 2x. So, we're going to use our identity to. Oh, that so deceiving. I know, huh? To write it as 2 sine of x cosine of x over. Two, no, over sine of x. Why am I writing that? Why Wait. did I? Why did I jump to that? Is that? Why I don't know. Why did what? Oh, over sine of x. Well, yeah, we can just be saying it's two cosine of x. There you go. Yeah. <coughs> oh, okay. I see why I broke my rule here. There's a solve here, and it's not the word prove. And so you can actually say this equals negative sine of x. Versus when it <laughs> well, says. we're trying proof. to find what x. We're trying to find the x. Yeah, we're going to get a value. And that's why it says on an interval, which none of them have said up until now. Sorry, I need to read the directions like I tell everyone. So in that case, I'm going to divide this. I wrote it like that. I'm going to divide everything by sine of x, because you can when you have an equal sign. All right. Uh, and so now our signs cancel on this side, and we have 2 cosine of x. And that's going to equal negative 1. Ooh. Wait, it gets rid of both. Sorry. Yes, because yeah, it's an equal now. So, oh, right. yeah. And then uh, we're going to divide everything by 2, and hopefully you realize that cosine of certain angles and uh, radians is negative a half. And so we would go to our unit circle on just the one rotation of the unit circle and find out when cosine of x is negative a half. Uh, let me do it. Yeah. Is 120. Okay. And. And 240. There you go. Sorry. No, it's why are there two? Because it's within, because one of them you're going uh, left and then up to a point, and the other one is left and down to a point. Yeah, so, that one's on the unit circle. Yeah. 
I didn't know the answer to the Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> because it's a circle. Yeah. And both of those, and both of them are like the same distance from zero degrees, sort of, because 120 degrees is 120 right. degrees from yeah. zero or to backwards, 40, right. yeah. it's 120 degrees from 360. True, true. Yeah. So you could say mm -hmm. negative 120, but we're on the positive interval, so don't say that. <laughs> okay. Yep. Um, alrighty, super. So then we get power reducing identities. And why would you need power reducing identities? It's because, because you may, just like the other one, you may have a two inside somewhere. In this case, you might have a squared, and then the answer has nothing to do with a square. So you can't really like undo something that has a square unless you write it twice and then it's still multiplying anyway. So this one's a little backwards and forwards because notice that you have cosine of 2u in here, so eventually you'll probably have to use the double angle formulas. But anyway, uh, if you have a sine squared, you can in fact rewrite it without a squared using this uh, formula or a cosine or a tangent. You can use these formulas to reduce the power, which is why they're calling it power reducing. So you can always, of course, reduce it as well by writing sine times sine, but you haven't actually taken the power away. You've just <laughs> rewritten it, but it's still there. <laughs> yeah. So in this one, there is no uh, power up there. So yay. Now we're going to do uh, some more uh, identities. It's going to be great. And again, these ones, if you look at the first word, notice it doesn't say an interval, and it says proof. So in that case, we are going to do the thing where we eliminate one of the sides and just rewrite the one until we equal that side. Oh man, this is exciting. Okay, so first thing that we have here is that there is a difference of squares going on. Yeah, well, what's happening here? Oh, okay, I like it. I suppose I could have done difference of squares, but not on this one. All right, so since we just talked about the um, power reducing, we're gonna rewrite this as cosine squared squared minus Sine squared squared. Because that technically is cosine to the fourth and sine to the fourth, but hey, now we have squares. And so now we can take those identities that we just got and rewrite the inner parts as squared. So we can rewrite it as one plus two, sorry, cosine. <coughs> oh, and I also changed the variable from theta to x, so we'll just keep it like that, okay? <laughs> I just uh, apparently have a default. Okay. Is it okay during quizzes and tests if we put the theta as an x? Yeah, as long as like you continue it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But I might also just figure it out. But yeah. Thank All right. <laughs> Mostly because it's a mistake I make, so yeah, mm -hmm. I can't can't fault you for what I already do. Well, x's are easier to write. So. Yeah. That's true. And familiar. X is two lines. Theta is like. Yeah, I think they use two lines in the line. line. Yeah, yeah. Oh, long true. Line. Gives me a cramp. All right, so on that note, uh, we are now going to actually expand or square the top and the bottom. So now everything's going to be over four because it's two squared, but then the numerator is going to be something else because we're going to multiply it out, aka FOIL or whatever you want to call it, or the area model or the box method. There's so many names, it's great. Cosine of 2x. Okay, so be careful when you do this because we can't multiply those twos that are inside of there. Okay, so it's not all of a sudden down here going to be like cosine squared 4x or something. If it's inside of a parenthesis, you can't actually change it uh, unless you use a formula. So in this case, we're going to have 1 and cosine of 2x and cosine of 2x and then cosine squared of 2x. So the numerator up here becomes uh, 1 plus 2 cosine of 2x plus cosine squared of 2x. Where did the 4 come from? I don't know Yeah, because we're squaring it. So if we square the numerator, we get this. But if we square the denominator, we get that. OK. And then we're going to square the next one, which just sounds really exciting. But of course, the pattern is now we have 1 minus 2 cosine of 2x. And then let's see what's going to happen. Minus times minus, so positive cosine squared. 
It's a lot of cosines. Yep, it is. Okay, so now notice that everything is over four. So we could, in fact, take a lot of these things that are, for instance, opposites. Um, but of course, those ones won't be. Uh, these ones will be, since we're going to distribute. So the entire numerator is now going to be 1 plus 2 cosine of 2x plus cosine squared of 2x. There's a 2. Minus 1 plus 2 cosine of 2x minus cosine squared. I know, I hate it too. But then you. But and then it's we all get over 4. Forms. And it's all over 4 still. <laughs> so we can go ahead and combine some things together, which will be nice. So this will become uh, 0, 1 and negative 1. Uh, this will become 0. Uh, that's it. And so then we have 2 cosines and 2 cosines. And so how many cosines do we have? 4 cosines of 2x over 4. And so we get rid of the 4s. And it's and <laughs> Which is what we wanted at the beginning. Maggie said G. I know, huh? <laughs> uh, I was last year when I wrote it down. Okay, so. Okay, for that. Oh, and then apparently I've made a note to myself that the next one is a bad example, so we shan't do it. All right. All right. <laughs> All right, skipping it. All righty, so then there's the other kind of scary looking identities, which are the half angle ones. This is the one I've been oh, looking yeah. at this whole chapter. Oh, yeah. I don't want to do that. <laughs> But uh, if we look at, this is actually kind of like the, um, whatever the ones are called, sum and difference identities that were really large. This one is really only going to mostly be used when you are using real numbers. Okay. Uh, so, oh, wait, real numbers are good. Yeah. Sorry. I mean, there might be an extra two things in there, but yeah, real numbers. So. What scared me about the tangent. Uh, u over 2, is that I thought it was one I did fraction too. Yeah. and not three oh. options. Oh, yeah, three options. I thought it was one like very big, big oh, fraction. Oh, yeah, yeah that's terrible. Yeah, no, that's that's why options. I didn't want to do this. Well, the way it is spaced, it does look like one big fraction. That being said, there aren't lines between them, so I probably should have figured that out. <laughs> okay, and that fraction would be amazing, and I just kind of want to do it now, but I'm not going to do it. Okay. <laughs> Like the definition just, of amazing differs wildly <laughs> from mine. If you just did like a half divided by a third divided by two thirds or something. Okay. We'll do that later. It'll be great. Cool. All right. Uh -huh. So I on that note, notice, oh my gosh, back to real numbers. It's great. Okay. Yeah. So sine of 15, again, is not on the unit circle unless you made a fancy one. Okay. And yeah, and so, and potentially, I suppose we could do a difference identity. Um, right, we're right two by two. Yeah. Three. Yeah, we could do a lot of them. Uh, but it does say use half angles, so let's do that. Okay. I also recopied the half angle that we'll be using, so hey. Um, so, turns out that u is going to be 30, because 30 divided by 2 is 15. And so then our answer is going to have a 30 in it. So our answer is going to be plus or minus 1 minus cosine of 30. So we just need to find out what that value is and divide it by 2. Um, the answer is going to be really gross, but we're still going to do it. So we've got cosine of 30 is a half. So 1 minus a half. Now what's uh, square root of 3 over 2 because cosine of x? Oh, yeah. Thank you. That was sine. Um, yeah, it is. Square root of 3 over 2. Just had to double check my mental map. Okay. Uh, and then that, as much as it looks really great, <laughs> uh, isn't. So we are going to try to rewrite it as much as possible. But I suppose if you stop there, I wouldn't fault you for, for doing that. But turns out that 1 is actually 2 over 2. So you can have 2 minus the square root of 3, all of that divided by 2. So I could rewrite it as 2 minus square root of 3 over 2. All of that over 2 over 1. And so officially, if you divide it by 2, you're multiplying by half. So we could multiply it by half. Basically, at this point, we're figuring out if you remember how to do fractions, which maybe you have to do that, or could you just multiply everything 
by 2 from the beginning and gotten 2 minus square root of 3? No, because if you multiply this whole thing by 2, then like it would have to be 2 over 2 or something. Like You can't just oh. pull a 2 out of it anywhere. But you could, but it would be gross. All right, so minus. Mm -hmm. Nope. So apparently all I have is 2 minus the square root of 3 over 4, which doesn't necessarily look any uh, easier. So sorry about that. Mm. That's the answer. Oh, and then, oh my god, the square root of 4, they took out and did the square root of it, and so now it's only the square root on top and a 2 entirely on the bottom, because square root of 4 is wow. 2. Wow, oh, that's but, horrible. Yeah, it is. So is that equal to if you just did the 45 minus 30? It must be, yeah. So why? why? Do this. Well, because this one wants you to do the same thing, but now get half angles and then maybe compare. Why? But because okay. there are two ways to do things in this case, or Can multiple. Plus or minus only on top now. Yep. Um, because I took it out when I because it's in the square rooted part, and <coughs> so it's not like I got rid of it. It's just it still applies. But why isn't it applied to the bottom? Because if you apply the same thing to the top and the bottom, then you didn't apply anything. Because a negative to the top and to the bottom won't actually change it at all. So. All right. Anyway, super, maybe. Okay. Ugh. Okay, so guess what? We could do another one, but no thanks. Um, and another one, but again, no thanks. Okay, so, because uh, you've all seen me plug in numbers. Uh, looks like I've tried to decide that you could do odds on this one with a question mark, so we'll do that. Um, so, your assignment is going to be this uh, thing, but odds only. Oh. Except for Except these ones. So basically from here. So 15 through 21 odd. I suppose because why not 31 to 35 odd. But turns out we want to do 49 and 50 still, so the only unodd number will be 50. So don't write this. Is 50 just really important? Must be. <laughs> At this current moment, oh, I could not tell you. Page. Page. Nothing. It's just page. Yep, it's just a page. Hey, Wherever 5 4 starts. <laughs> it's just a page. Okay, well, let's go to. Yeah. Page. All right. <laughs> Look, I wrote five four. Okay. But if we go to our overview and the book link that's there, what? I accidentally linked this as the geometry textbook. And so someone tried to go to the geometry textbook and got rerouted to this. That would have been a surprise. Close enough. Uh, what <laughs> side? Yeah, what is happening? Well, I mean, they're like that is hopefully so covered in geometry. Well, I mean, yeah, well, well, I don't know what geometry so there is. is. Okay. But not much, much past that. Yeah. So Here's I'm guessing that this is a round page. Mm hmm, mm hmm, over in five. Oh, God. Keep scrolling. Here we go. It's by four. Mm, I'd say round page 476 mm, ish, maybe? I mean, yeah. you can figure it out. Oh, you've got your book. Excellent. Wow, what? I just um, realized that it won't scroll that nicely, so I'm not going to scroll all the way to that. So, anyway, that was our angle identities.